Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the DISC method for calculating volumes. What we're going to start doing now is calculating volumes of solids generated by taking certain areas described by different curves and rotating those around either the x-axis, the y-axis, or even another line. So to start with, we're going to start with the easiest volume, and that's the volume that's generated by taking an area bounded by one of the axes, and it's rotating around that axis. And the method that we're going to use to find these volumes is called the DISC method, which you'll see why in very shortly. If I were to take the area bounded by f of x and the x-axis, from x equals a to x equals b. And if I were to rotate that area around the x-axis, it would create a volume. Now, if we take a look at that representative rectangle that we talked about when we were talking about area, that rectangle will have a height of f of x, and a width of dx. And if we were to take that representative rectangle and rotate it around the x-axis, hopefully you can see that the shape formed by that rotation will be a disc. So it's a disc, and this is a flat cylinder, and we can find the volume of that disc or that cylinder by using our volume of a cylinder formula. So as a review, volume of a cylinder is pi times radius squared times height. And if we want to sum all of those discs together from A to B, we need to use integration. So this is what the formula is going to look like for finding the volume of this total area as it's rotated around the x-axis. It will be the integral from a to b of pi times the radius squared. In terms of our rectangle, the radius is f of x. It will be the radius of the disk that's formed. So my radius will be f of x, and we're going to square it. The height of that disc will be the dx. Okay, it will be the thickness of that disc. So that will be dx. So this is the radius when we, you know, rotate that rectangle around the x-axis, and dx will be the height. Because pi is a constant, when you look up these formulas, usually you'll see that constant moved in front of the integral sign. So you'll probably see the formula written like this. And that's what we're going to use to find the volume of an area bounded by certain curves, including the x-axis, if that area is rotated around the x-axis. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Our first example says, that find the volume generated by revolving the area bounded by y equals four times square root of x, x equals zero, and the x-axis about the x-axis. So we know that this is going to be a disc because it's bounded by the x-axis and it's rotating around the x-axis. They might say y equals zero instead of writing the x-axis, same, referring to the same line. So first of all, we're going to draw this. We know how to draw the graph of square root of x. Multiplying by 4 is not going to change the shape that much. This is just a general idea of that graph. So y equals 4 times square root of x is that function. x equals 3. Vertical line and the x-axis. So the area bounded by those three things would be this area here. So we're going to take a look at a representative rectangle in that area. 
then we're going to rotate it around the x-axis. And I often make a little arrow like that just to remind myself of where that area is rotating. Because sometimes it will be the x-axis, sometimes it'll be the y-axis in some of these questions, and sometimes it will be uh, rotating around another line. So we know that volume is pi times the integral from a to b of our function squared dx. So we just have to determine what all those values are. We know our a in this case will be 0 and b will be 3. Our function is 4 times root x and that function gets squared dx. This integral will therefore give us the volume of the solid formed by taking this area and rotating it around the x-axis. And hopefully you can envision what this looks like. It's going to be like the, you know, the cone head of a missile or something like that. Before we integrate this, we need to simplify it because we can square this. So it will be pi times the integral of 16 x squared x squared will be x. So now we can integrate that. The integral of 16x will be 8x squared. And now we evaluate it. And when we put a zero in, it will just be, we are subtracting a zero. So this will be 72 pi cubic units, which you can leave it exact like that, especially when it's not an application. We're not actually trying to find the volume of something specific. It's just a general question. Or you can express it as a decimal, 226.2, if you multiply 72 times pi. And in either case, um, I recommend that you put cubic units so that you understand it's a volume you're working with. If you're given the dimensions, then you can put those dimensions in, which we'll do in the next example. I found this example and I thought it was a good one to illustrate applications of finding volumes. It says a wing tank for an airplane is a solid of revolution formed by rotating the region bounded by the graph of y equals 1 16th x times square root of 4 minus x and the x-axis from x equals 0 to x equals 4 around the x-axis where x and y are measured in meters. Find the volume of the tank. This particular function doesn't fit into our um, basic curves that I talked about a few videos ago. So you're going to need to use some other method to figure out the graph. I've drawn the graph for you and between 0 and 4 those are actually points where it crosses the x-axis. So the area bounded by this curve here which is y equals 1 16th x times square root of x 4 minus x. So the area bounded by this curve and the x-axis is this. We're taking that area and we're rotating it around the x-axis. So it forms a solid of revolution and to find that volume we're going to use the disk method because it's bounded by the axis it's rotating around. So I take a representative rectangle at any point. Its height will be this function and that becomes the radius of the solid of the disk and the width is dx which becomes the height of that disk. So we set up our formula. Volume will equal, we can bring pi outside, and it's from 0 to 4 of this function squared dx. So you need to simplify that first before you integrate. 1 16th squared is 1 over 256 x squared and then when I take a root and square it, it just cancels the root so that will be 4 minus x dx. This is a constant I'm going to move that out in front of the integral sign as well. And then what I'm going to do, I got a product here, I'm just going to multiply through. So that will be 4x squared minus x cubed. Now that I have it simplified, I can integrate. So 
So the integral of 4x squared dx will be 4 thirds x cubed minus the integral of x cubed dx will be 1 quarter x to the fourth. And now we evaluate it. So the volume will be equal to pi over 256. When I put a 4 in for x, 4 cubed is 64 times 4 is 256 over 3 minus 4 to the fourth is 256 divided by 4 is 64 minus when we put a 0 in it's just 0. This will equal we get a common denominator of 3 so this is 192 over 3 and when I subtract I get 64 over 3 64 into there once, 64 into there 4, so it will be pi over 12, and my unit is, everything is measured in meters and it's a volume, so it will be cubic meters. Now because this is an actual application and we want to know what the volume of that tank, I probably wouldn't leave it like that. I would actually take pi and divide by 12, and when I do that division, I get 0 0.262 cubic meters. And then we could find out how many liters that holds because we know that every cubic meter holds a thousand liters. So that would be 262 liters. I like to use these types of examples so you can see how calculus applies to the real world. Practice these on your own. And then in the next video, I'm going to do another disc method, but it will be of an area that's bounded by the Y axis and it's rotated about the Y axis. So when you've had some practice with this type of volumes. Let's move on to the next video. All right, take care and we'll see you then.